Welcome to Bite Size SEO News, where I find the top three news in digital marketing so you don't have to. Where I make news easy to digest and easy to follow in 10 minutes or less. If you want to read the article, links are posted in the show notes below, so you never have to worry about FOMO. My name is Rich Young, your host. Today is Thursday, February 24th, 2022, episode 37. Coming up. Fresh out of the oven are today's top three news you definitely don't want to miss. Story one, Google Shopping Ads, Short Title Attributes. Story two, one star reviews have increased on Yelp for four years in a row. Story three, Facebook Reels rolls out worldwide along with new creative tools and ads. If you're ready, let's get into it. All right, for our first story for today, this one's brought to you by Barry Schwartz of Search Engine Roundtable. Google Merchant Center has added support to Google supporting feeds for a short title attribute. You can use the short title attribute to briefly and clearly identify the product you're selling, Google said. Google explained that this is in contrast to the title title attribute. Quote, the value you submit for the short title attribute should be concise and will only be used in browsy contents such as discovery campaigns or Google ads on Gmail. End quote. Google has a new help document on short titles that goes over the requirements and best practices. Requirements. These requirements include use a relevant short title that clearly describes your product. Be concise while the title attribute is used to match a consumer's search to your products. The short title is intended to show your product more concisely in browsy experiences. Describe the product shown on your landing page. Make sure the short title describes the product you're linking to, while the short titles you provide for products in your product data don't always need to be identified to the content on your landing pages. They should refer to the same product. Use professional and grammatically correct language. Correct grammar is easy to understand and gives a professional appearance which can lead to more clicks. Also, avoid gimmicky ways of drawing attention such as including all caps, symbols, HTML tags, and promotional text. Don't use words from foreign languages unless they're well understood, such as a product with a foreign name. Don't use capital letters for emphasis. Capitalized text is common in spam and untrustworthy ads. You should still use capitalization when it's appropriate, including for abbreviations, phone numbers, countries, and currency. Don't include promotional text. Don't add information such as price, sale price, sale dates, shipping, delivery date, other time-related information, or your company's name. Include this information with the other attributes such as sale price or shipping. Don't use extra white spaces. Instead, use those characters in a more effective way to describe your product. Best Practices Limit your title to 65 or fewer characters. Users usually only see the first 65 characters of a short title depending on their screen size. Put the most important details first. Users don't always read the entire title, especially in browser experiences where they are scrolling quickly. Be concise. Add the brand names if it's a differentiating factor. If you sell products from many different brands and the product's brand is a differentiating characteristic of the product, add the brand name to the product title so that the users can understand who makes the product you are selling. If you'd like to get some more information with more brackets and screenshots, make sure to check out Barry Schwartz's article in the show notes. Our next story for today, this was brought to you by Joy Hawkins of localu.org. Yelp releases data every year that shows the star rating distribution for all reviews left on their site. I recorded the numbers that were listed in the reports for the last four years to see what trends they show. There are two main things that stick out. 1. The number of people that leave 2, 3, and 4 star reviews is shrinking. 2. The number of 5 star reviews and 1 star reviews is increasing. While the 5 star category did not grow at all in the last year, the 1 star category has increased for the last 4 years. Why are Yelp reviews so negative? According to a study done at Northwestern University in 2020, 
Restaurant ratings on Google Maps are, on average, 0.7 stars higher than those on Yelp. We constantly see businesses with lower average ratings on Yelp compared to Google and other sites. For example, this business has a 4-star average on Booking.com, TripAdvisor, and Google, yet Yelp has them at 3 stars. Here are a couple things that likely cause Yelp reviews to be more negative than Google's. 1. Yelp's review filter removes a lot of positive reviews that are fake. This study by the FTC shows that fake reviews can account for about half of the higher average rating for low quality businesses on Google compared to Yelp. 2. Yelp doesn't allow businesses to solicit reviews. This study, done by Northwestern University in 2016, found that self-motivated reviews tend to be more negative, on average, compared to reviews that are solicited from the business. If you'd like to check out some more information with more screenshots and charts, make sure to check out Joy's article in the show notes. On to our final story. This one's brought to you by Sarah Perez of TechCrunch. After publicly launching in the US this past September, Facebook Reels today is becoming globally available in more than 150 countries. The feature, which is a key part of Meta's response to the TikTok threat, allows creators to share short form video content on Facebook or cross post Reels from Instagram in order to reach a broader audience. Alongside today's global rollout, Facebook is also introducing more tools and new ways for creators to make money from their Reels through advertising and soon, stars. While Reels first began as a way to directly combat TikTok with a feature inside the Instagram app, Meta soon realized it could mount a more powerful counter-offensive if it also brought Facebook into the mix. As a result, the company touted during its Q4 2021 earnings that Reels is now its fastest growing content format by far. The company also said Reels was the biggest contributor to growth on Instagram and growing very quickly on Facebook too. However, Reels currently monetizes at a lower rate than other content formats, like Instagram's feed and stories, but Meta believes this will change over time. On that front, the company today is expanding tests of Facebook Reels overlay ads to all Reels creators in the US, Canada, and Mexico. By mid-March, the test will expand to nearly all 50 plus countries where in-stream ads are already available, Meta told us. It's worth noting that in-stream video ads today only run on Facebook videos, not Reels. That means these new overlay ads represent Facebook's first attempt to bring advertising revenue directly to Reels. Creators participating in the ad test will be able to try out two different ad formats, banners and stickers. These are non-interruptive ads as they sit transparently atop the playing content instead of pausing the video to show the ad. Banner ads appear as a semi-transparent overlay at the bottom of a reel, while stickers are static images that can be placed anywhere within the reel, just like other stickers can be. Facebook will then choose the ad to display in the frame that's best suited to the viewer. During the test, Meta tells us that it will follow the same revenue share with creators that it uses today for its in-stream ads program, which is 55% to the creator and 45% to Facebook, but this could evolve as tests continue. Creators who are already a part of the existing in-stream ads program will be automatically opted into the new overlay ads test by default. Others can check their eligibility. In addition, Facebook will launch full screen and immersive ads in between reels and worldwide markets in the next months ahead. These formats have been testing since October. Not all Facebook Reels will have ads, though. Meta explains that whether or not ads are included in a Reel depends on a variety of factors, ranging from advertiser targeting setting to the value of the ad for the viewer. Creators can also choose to opt out specific Reels from banner ads in a creator studio if they prefer. Meanwhile, advertisers will gain brand sustainability tools including publisher lists, block lists, inventory filters, and delivery reports for the new banner and sticker ads. In addition to ads, creators will soon be able to monetize their reels with STARS, the virtual tipping mechanism that's already offered on Facebook Live. And currently, successful creators are receiving direct payouts too. The Reels Play Bonus Program, a part of Meta's larger $1 billion creative fund, can generate huge bonuses. Some creators earn up to $35,000 per month, the company says but the long haul viability of creator funds is still up for debate. Meta declined to tell us how much is paid out to Reels creators directly since the fund was announced last July. 
Beyond monetization features, Facebook is also now rolling out the creative tools it first announced last year, including Remix, 60 Second Reels, Draft, and Video Clipping. If you'd like to get some more information, and there's a lot more in the article, make sure to check out Sarah's article in the show notes. That's it for today's show. We've made it to the end. You're good to go and ready for the day. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate the show so it helps spread the news and I can continue doing what I do best, which is providing you the latest SEO news you just cannot miss. Serve Tapa style, making it easy on the stomach and on the go. Once again, I'm your host, Rich Ong, and I'll see you on the flip side.